My name is Crypto Dog to the rescue. Please smash the like button, hit the bell, comment below. There's no value to you, but it has great value to me, my channel, um, everything helps support the dog sanctuary and dog rescuary, a rest sanctuary that I'm going to be opening up um, as quickly as possible. You know, I've given myself a certain amount of time, but obviously the crypto market's not working in our favor. So, um, you know, just kind of want to kind of reiterate that please like smash you know subscribe would really really help me out um a lot um and of course liking everything um you know that i say or commenting you know let me know if, if i'm on the right track if anything is confusing to you anybody um you know that's what i'm here for basically is to kind of help everybody gain a, a, the, the, a, a correct perspective on this now i'm not saying my perspective has been right this whole you know throughout the year you know what i mean um, but it's, it's corrected now and, and I'm ga making gains and it's not based on the things that I thought were important when I first started trading cryptocurrency. You know, I thought there was many differences between the stock market and cryptocurrency. There's not many differences in the co in, in when it comes down to trading technical analysis, uh, you know, things of the sort. So, um, you know, it's really in the way that you look at things perspectively because that's how day traders, swing traders, and professional core traders and macro traders, this is how they all look at the market. And I'm trying to give you a little, you know, insight of, of how they're perspectively looking at things. So let's get right into it here, right? 201 billion right now, 54.1%, okay? Went up 0.2% since yesterday. Uh, 6297, so uh, volume went down a little bit to uh, 4 billion so um everything's kind of colorful right now uh in the market uh digitex is our you know 24 hour changer up bat token uh loom network good to see dogecoin you know eternal fun fair that seemed to be a good one um when that first came out so that's good to see uh so let's move forward in technical analysis and kind of some things i want to touch on in this video let me get my big head out of the way on here so Everybody looks at these wedges, right? I mean, I, I had a buddy come over last night and we were talking about, you know, technical analysis and how a lot of people don't use technical analysis um, or they don't put a big percentage on the technical analysis, which you know, I'm, I'm uh, uh, guilty of that, too, in the past. And uh, now learning things. And I even talked to my mentor that's got me into stock trading and so on and so forth. And the first thing he asked me was because he doesn't really know much about cryptocurrency. He's in the stock market. He's a millionaire. He's been retired at 40 years old. Um, and uh, he basically said, well, does crypto have an exchange? Is it a, is it a market? And I said, yes, there are candles and buy sells and points and stop losses and you know, so, so forth. He's like, well, then use the 20 MA and the 200 MA. If there's nothing different as far as the market as an exchange, you're buying and selling and trading and sell, uh, shorting and longing. It's going to work the same way as any other market out there. Depend, no matter if it's the stock market, doesn't matter if it's crypto market. It doesn't matter what kind of market is, you know. But it has the same, um, it has the same properties as a stock market, right? And on this technical analysis, so why not use it roughly the same way, if not exactly the same way, if you can? So I've been using the twenty and the two hundred MA, and I'm trying to show everybody in these videos how powerful the two hundred and the twenty MA is. And where you need to start putting your, you know, you know, all these indicators, you know, everybody keeps telling you that, oh, you know, you want to put more indicators. The more indicators, the better. Not necessarily. It's the ones that are showing you the most um, information. It's not just every, I mean, I, I've used waves. I've used Bollinger Bands. I have propulsions and all this stuff. There's not a lot of percentage of that helping you in your decision making and these wedges are not something that you first go off of this is an accentuation of what you're seeing on the 20 and the 200 ma they work but they're just showing you possibilities and that these are all 50 50 pots possibilities just because it's wedging down doesn't mean it's going to break up doesn't mean it's going to break down out of this wedge until it's forced to because the wedge is coming to an end so, you know, all year we've been, everybody's been putting wedges in. I've been putting wedges in, you know what I mean? This is a year chart going all the way back to our big boom um, in the beginning of 2018 into 2017. And it's just a huge wedge. I mean, every time we put a wedge in here in the short term, it's always a, a downtrend wedge and it always looks like it's going to break the wedge and it never does and it goes back down. Uh, and when, if it does break the wedge, it doesn't break it for very long because, again, it's forced to break the wedge because it's coming to an end. So, you know, a lot of the technical analysis that I, I see people, you know, um, 
you know, telling people about and people are actually, you know, taking this information and, and thinking that this is where you need to start is incorrect in a trader's mind in really any technical analysis that you look, it's the way that you're doing these things. So first thing I'm going to show you, you know, I'm going to tell you kind of how the way I do things so you guys can kind of see this. The first thing I do is look at the 20 and the 200 MA. Okay, this wedge here means nothing to me. If the 20 MA and the 200 are telling me that it's on a downtrend and it's all going down here, okay, you can say, well, it's not going to break it right now. Well, of course, it's not going to break it right now. But of course, your indicators are telling you other things. So it's, it's, it's the way that you have to start weighing your technical analysis and what you're using. And I've used many, many different methods this year. And based on this downtrend market, it's not because of the downtrend. It's because of the method. You can make money on a downtrend market, right? Make money on an uptrend market. You make money on a sideways market. But everybody's looking for big gains and instant gratification. And that's not how traders work. They don't work for instant gratification. They try to get it at statistical advantage or statistical edge on it on their on their trades. So if they can do 10 trades a day. They want to have at least seven to eight trades as wins. They know they're going to have some losses because the probability is, you know, you're obviously going to have some losses, but you have more wins than losses. When it comes down to it, then you win. Then you made money that day or that week or that month or that year, right? So it doesn't really matter. And this is a four hour chart because I wanted to show you on a macro point of view that everybody seems to be putting these wedges in here um, and, and then going off of the wedge saying it's going to break out to a new high. It's going to, well, what new high are really are you talking about? Let's go back to the four hour chart. You know what I mean? Are, are, are you saying that right here is a new high? You know, let's, let's kind of blow this up a little bit. Are you saying right here, this is a new high? Are you saying right here is a new high? Are you saying this is a new high? No, that's, that's a correction back up to where it needs to be in a big old trap. So it really all depends on how you're looking at this. And these wedges do not help you in, de you know, initially determining which way the market's going to go or something big, huge is going to happen. It's not that elementary. I mean, if, if it was that elementary, you know, traders and, and everybody else in the market would be making a whole lot more money this year and not like us. All everybody's pretty most part underwater and trying to keep afloat with their nose over, you know, the water. So it kind of hurts me a little bit when I start hearing this stuff and everybody's selling these wedges and, you know, when's it going to break out and so on and so forth. You, you, you can't tell the future, right? But you can tell the trends of things and the indicators that you use accentuates your decisions, your, 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 your probabilities of percentages, right? So right here, you know, you could say that you have a 60-40 chance just based on the downtrend of the market, right? that it's going to go down. And now it's kind of going sideways right now and it's starting to correct itself on a buy point on the MACD. And as you can see, the RSI is starting to get more buys and starting to kind of go a little sideways, but up, right? Doesn't mean it's going to go up. It just means it's going to go sideways right now. You know, and that's a buy point. So, uh, you know, it's stopping that stop or that loss from happening and now a buy point. So obviously it's going to go sideways. Is it going to, could it go up? Absolutely it could go up. There's always a probability of it obviously going up and going down. What we're trying to do is minimize the probabilities in our heads to say, okay, well, I'm going to take a small chance here because I have a 25, 75% chance, 60% chance, 85% chance that I'm right in my thinking. That's the way traders work. And, and these triggers that I'm telling you about when, you know, throughout these videos, the 20 MA, it turns green. You know, it came, you know, we'll just look at this real quick, just on a small gain on a sideways market, right? Okay. It's gone down underneath. Okay, you hit the 200 as a support resistant. It, it resisted or supported at that. And it's gone up to the red. It broke it, but it turned red. It came down. It turned green and became big. So that's buy point. So there had, comes a little bit of wave. One, one wave happened, right? And then it just corrected itself back down, turned green, not really too strong. And then boom, now it's gone into a sell, right? And now support resistant on the, torn, on the 200 MA. It's come up a little bit, did not break the 20, and boom, it causes a sell. Because once it breaks that 200 MA, that is a trigger for day traders and swing traders and core traders to sell out because something is going to, you know what I mean? Something big is going to happen based on the 200 MA is king when it's going flat and it's on a downtrend. Starting from this one, as soon as it hit this one, it's caused the downtrend. And that's. 
that's the statistical advantage when you're looking at this and looking for probabilities and bringing your percentages up. Nothing is ever 100% in any exchange you work. Stock market, crypto market, doesn't matter. So, and, and, it, it, and I still see people that I'm following keep talking about these wedges like it's the Anzal Bezal uh, Bible of what's going to happen here. Oh, you know, if it breaks in this new high, you guys want to start buying in because it's going to go. No. Just because it breaks this a little bit doesn't mean nothing. It can go right back down into this and cause a whole new wedge and all this. It, wedges don't mean nothing initially. It's just an accentuation of what you're looking at here and saying, okay, well, I'll give it another 5% on my thinking that it's going to break this based on if it was going up, you know, the, the 200 MA was sideways or on the incline and the 20 MA is on an incline. It could possibly break that and go up. So it gives you more percentage. But again, it's on a downtrend. The 200 MA is flat. It's gone underneath the 200 MA and it's on a downtrend. This is a four, this is a four hour chart, but it doesn't matter what chart you're looking at. When you start putting these wedges in, and so on and so forth, it doesn't matter. So, it, it, and that's, I've done this all year long. I've redone wedges, I've put new wedges in. You know, you can you can pop a wedge in here, you can put a wedge in here, and it's gonna show you pretty much the same thing, that it's, it's you know, uh, of course on this sideways market, it's hit bottom and it's gone underneath the bottom now. Well, no, it's not, it's gone sideways. So just on the bottom, so, you know, the wedges aren't going to tell you that it's going to go back up. The 200 MA and the 20 MA is going to give you the most probability that it's going to go back up, depending on what chart you're looking at. A macro chart, a day trade chart, a core chart, a swing chart. However you're trading, the 20 MA and the 200 MA help you out in your thinking initially. And then you can look at your wedges and your MACD and your RSI. Don't put too many indicators in there. Simplify your technical analysis and raise your percentage probabilities. Why have five indicators in there when two will give you just as much percentage, if not more, um, based on discipline and knowing where triggers are um, with the 20 MA and the 200 MA? You know, again, nothing's for certain on anything that you think of, but if you are confident in your percentages and your probabilities that it's going to do do well you know, then it, it, it's, it's going to work more times than not is pretty much it. And that's why I mock trade to kind of test these things and to make sure that I'm thinking at things, things right. And I'm not just putting in things in here willy nilly. Um, so mock trading takes away the risk of you actually losing money. So you can actually think about probabilities and percentages more, you know, uh, more instead of, you know, thinking you're going to lose money if you just hold on and hold on and hold on or sell, 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 or buy in here, and it's just gonna keep going down. Uh, it, it takes away all that. So, and then when you start trading for real, you won't even think about the money you're putting in, you're thinking about your decisions because you're so confident through mock trading that it's gonna do more times than not what you think it's gonna do. So, um, you know, again, I'm a little irked because I, I've watched like four people this morning on YouTube, and they all talk about, the first thing they talk about is the wedging of it and, and and it's not the stock market that's doing it it's the crypto market and there and these five things like the government's gonna come down and hound on uh cryptocurrency and and so and no it really what it comes down to it it's wall street okay wall street right now is analogous and i'll show you why and it's it's not the reason that you, you think that it is like you know the s p 500 and that it is analogous uh i'm sorry it's correlating when you see it on a technical analysis but the reasoning why it happened is not the same. So let's get into that. So is so is there a correlation between Bitcoin and the stock market? Yes, but no. And this guy kind of really brings it out, and I, I kind of and I agree with him on this. So looking at the Bitcoin graph, and that of the stock market, including the Dow Jones and the S and P five hundred, you may have noted an interesting similarity, right? It's correlation right now. Everything's dumped at the same time. Same thing back in February. Stock market was growing to new heights rapidly. With even Donald Trump tweeting how it had risen 20% since his election. A little before these heights, Bitcoin has also surged up to its all-time 20,000, right? So both markets then started to plunge first. It was Bitcoin whose price steadily dropped towards 6,000 before hitting a floor. The stock market fell a lot quicker, but the pattern looked remarkably similar. With them both finding a floor last Monday. The Dow Jones uh, average saw its biggest one-day drop in history. On Monday, an S&P 500 had its worst day since 2011. So seven years, it's finally had a, a, a worst day in trading. Questions then started to spring up whether or not there was a correlation between these vastly different assets. 
okay, yeah, they're, de they're different assets. But the way we trade them on the exchanges is not different. Okay, we buy, sell, we trade, you know, we exchange. It's, it's the same thing. So uh, let's go down here. So these Z-scores and fear gauge is what it's really kind of based on right now. Um, let's see, let, let's go down here. So a simple glance at this correlation graph, right? This is the, uh, a Z-score correlation graph, right? So a, a simple uh, glance at this shows that the relationship between Bitcoin and the S&P is at a weak positive relationship, but the correlation between VIX and Bitcoin is negative 0.31, making it a moderate negative relationship. So the VIX is a so-called fear gauge and indicates the level of risk that is currently present in the markets at any time. According to this graph, there should be an inverse correlation between VIX and Bitcoin. And this was demonstrated in an article on CBOE's, okay, CBOE's website, Futures, that overlaid the, the VIX and Bitcoin price. So it is between the VIX and Bitcoin, not the stock market itself, where the correlation seems to exist. But then again, for the last three years, VIX index outperformed Bitcoin in terms of volatility. And in 25, 2015, 2016, the correlation was almost non-existing. Well, that makes sense. Why? Because it, it's, it's 2017 that matches the pattern. Why does 2017 match the pattern? Futures, CBOE's website, they've overlaid the VIX on Bitcoin in 2017, and now there's a correlation based on futures market this year we have with 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 crypto, and stock market has futures as well. So a fear gauge on there. So you know when fear happens, futures, everybody starts moving things around. You know what I mean? Especially in futures and selling their futures and all this stuff. So yes, there's a correlation when it comes to the stock market based on the futures markets. Okay, crypto exchange market futures markets, CBOE, CME and stock market futures, all the futures markets that they have running around, um, you know, in America, China, Hong Kong, you know, wherever, you know, South Korea. So, you know, let's keep that in mind. I mean, everybody's saying that there's no core. Yes, there is a correlation, but it has to do with the fee with the gauging, with the sentiment analysis on here. So, uh, you know, let's look at the sentiment. This is crypto fear and greed index. Look at the extreme fear it has now. Yesterday, 19, you know, I mean, look at this. It's just on a constant downward trend. So the VIX, same thing, CBOE, CME, futures, all makes sense that there's a correlation there and that, you know, it's futures that it's, it's doing is what's futures is it has a big hand in it. Um, and based on this, you know, correlation here with the VIX um, and not the, the actual stock market itself. Because, uh, you know, S&P 500 has futures if on their index. NASDAQ does, Dow does. You know, I watch stocks all the time. I watch the TV channel. I still am kind of into stocks a little bit, but not much. I, I'm focused into crypto this year. Um, so I want to find out what's comparable, what's analogous, what's correlating, what's not, um, and the times things open. So um, the last thing I want to do touch on, and I've been hearing this a lot too, are these Bitcoin ATMs. And everybody's cool. Uh, it's so excited when they see that Bitcoin ATMs are coming out, um, um, and, you know, and it's mainstreaming Bitcoin and so on and so forth. Well, let me tell you, Bitcoin ATMs are OTC, all right, over the counter, private, you know, uh, OTC sellers, basically private buyers. They buy all this Bitcoin off the exchange and then they sell it to you through their ATM. Uh, so this is kind of just showing you right here. So Russell is an over-the-counter Bitcoin trader. He's the kind of guy you can call up whenever you're in Las Vegas and flush with Bitcoins. For a percentage of the transaction, he'll meet you and swap Bitcoins for cash or vice versa. Okay, that's the old way of doing it. Well, back in January, he and his brother John came up with the Bitcoin ATM idea as a way of automating what Mark Russell was already doing, over-the-counter Bitcoin trader. So now he's a private over-the-counter um, uh, procurer. He procures Bitcoin off the exchanges and then sells it to you out of his own pocket. That's what Bitcoin ATMs are, over the counter. Doesn't help anybody out in the exchange. Helps nobody out, but this guy right here. Um, so, you know, again, I, I've been watching people all morning and everybody's touching on the ATMs and how cool they are to see that they're all going up. That is somebody else is putting their own Bitcoin in there and selling it off to you. So you keep that in mind, guys, you know, when we're all trading here. And let's get back into the technical analysis here and, 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 and let me show you. Uh, at least, you know, let me, let's talk about it a little bit as opposed to what's going on. So there's a one hour chart, right? You know, I'll even put a small, let's see if I can get back here a little bit. Uh, and I'll even put a small 
you know, corridor in here. Uh, so everybody kind of knows what I'm talking about here, right? So let's just put one right there. Oops. Yeah, here we go. Let's put one right here. Oh man, this thing is skipping on me. So, all right, there we go. So we're going to put one right on here, basically based on this falling wedge, right? And if you're saying that that's a falling wedge based on this new sideways market, Okay, that's the bottom of it, right? We'll bring it down a little bit more. That's kind of where we're sitting apparently. And here's the wedge going sideways. So here's a one hour wedge, right? It's gone up to a precipice, but as you can see, the 20 MA came back down and is on a downswing. Soon as it broke, it's crazy how this works with the 20 MA and the 200 MA. This is your meat and potatoes, 220 MA. Use everything else as accentuators, even all these indicators over here. It doesn't indicate nothing when it tells you to buy right here. It doesn't mean that it's gonna go up all the way up here. It just says that there's a small buy point here and it may be good to make some, you know, set yourself up for a possible boom. That's really what it's all about when you're doing these trades. If you are saying that you're gonna only say, do, say you only do 10 trades a day, Okay, 10 trades a day. That's pretty quick for a day trader, you know, or a, a, you know, fairly, a good fairly amount for a quick day trader, right? 10 trades. So if you buy it down here on a sideways market, you buy it down here, you sell it up here, right? You buy it down here, you sell it up here. Well, if you buy it down here and it comes up and then boom, it just freaking, you've already set yourself up in a good position. And then when you start selling it right down here and boom, it goes down here, you just staved off a lot of freaking losses around there based on, using this as a support resistant and buy and sell line um, guide. So, and the 200 MA acts as, again, an overall controller. If it's going down, you know what I mean? It's it's gonna come back down and meet it or it's going to have a magnetic effect and come back up and, and, and resist it, you know? Um, but using these wedges as your ends all bees all, whether it's going to break out and because it's going to break out, it's going to boom. And it makes no, that is un, unprobable that that's going to happen unless everything else is showing you that it's doing that. The 20 MA and the 200 MA is showing you that it's going to do that. The MACD, you know, uh, is way up here, you know, possibly at the zero, even way down here and gaps, buys up gaps. And then just, you know, the elevation of it goes up. Doesn't mean it's going to do it, but it gives you a better probability it's going to do it with the RSI obviously on a strength um, going up from a from a low point all the way up to the top point. So uh, these indicators are not your ends all bees all. These are accentuators, okay? And it may bring your percentage up five to ten percent, maybe even less than that each one. But the more you use propulsions and waves and Bollinger bands and you know it it the probabilities of all those accentuating each other is not working because they, they have to kind of go in tandem with each other. It doesn't work. You know what I mean? Sometimes the RSI doesn't even help me out. So why would I go look at Bollinger bands and waves if my RSI, you know what I mean? It, it doesn't make any sense. So you, you just want to go back here, meat and potatoes, indicators that you trust, that you know about, that you're familiar with, that you, you, you get it when it moves a different way. And you're not pissed off about it. I mean, traders understand these things to a almost a, a technical, almost a scientific point of view, and they are very, very um, uh, disciplined in their trading. You know what I mean? If it goes up over the green, if it's on an upward trend incline, and it goes up over the green, that's a buy point for them because they know that's a trigger percentage wise, seventy five to eighty five percent. If that turns green over the red, right, of a nice big, you know, little bar, but it's strong with no wicks. They're gonna buy it. You know what I mean? It's just based on that. You have some wicks. You know, it may you know it may not be a good time to buy until it starts getting away. So there's just ifs and ifs and ifs, but you probably start going up per candle. So you know, realize that. So you know, let's these MAs, right? This is the simple moving average. If you're using an MA, it's simple moving average. Why do I use the simple moving average as opposed to the exponential moving average? The exponential moving average, okay, only relies on the closing of the candle. The simple moving average relies on the average of the closing of that candle, right? Not the closing of the candle. We're, you know, in America, we're so in, you know, uh, uh, it, you know, we've been kind of been seared with looking at the close. 
of a candle. Well, when you look at the close of a candle, you're not looking at past information. You're not looking at current information. Uh, and again, I was talking to my buddy about this last night and he was saying um, that, you know, he looks at his phone and, and it tells him, you know, gives him a beep when, you know, a certain coin hits a, a low that he thinks is a low and it tells him, hey, you know, your coin has hit a low. And when he finally goes in this probably possibly buy and he starts looking at the price again, a minute later, the price is different, whether it be lower or whether it be higher, because they're showing you a close on that number and not the current, what's currently happening in the market, you know, a fluctuation of prices and so on and so forth. It doesn't show you any of that. It shows you the candle just behind it saying it closed here on the red, it closed here on the green. So it's showing you past information, just like everything else, you know what I mean? So you really have to go, I mean, there is a you know, there's an art to this. I mean, technical analysis is an art, you know, it's not going to be straight line. It's not going to be perfectly printed for you. You have to really color in the blanks, fill in the blanks um, with your own probabilities and statistic analysis, technical analysis, statistical edge, and so on and so forth. That's what the casinos do. That's what I've been trying to push on everybody. This is what professionals look at. Okay. And again, I was talking to my buddy last night and, you know, I, you know, I asked him if, if he ever plays a stock market. And he said, no, he doesn't play a stock market. And it makes sense. A lot of people in crypto didn't start in the stock market. They started in crypto, right? Well, the stock market is the same type of exchange, the same type of trading that you got going on per coin. They have futures involved. Okay. They have, you know, day traders involved, swing traders involved, core traders involved, macro traders. Everything is analogous when it comes to technical analysis on here the projects are different the way they're set up coins versus stock so on and so forth but the way they're traded is not there's no difference really besides it's a 24 hour 24 7 and you can trade coin to coin when you can't trade stock to stock so um you know i'm not a financial advisor this is just my opinion but really you know i mean i'm going to show you live trading and i'm going to take one ethereum and i i, I chose ethereum and usdt to trade but i'm probably going to go to a smaller price coin so I can buy five or 10 at a time and then trade those and make a prop. I mean, I make a better profit. So I'm going to find a coin that has um, a good trend, you know, and not bad, big gaps in between bars and so on and so forth on an hour or 30 minute chart. And then I can start swing trading that and then possibly go down to a 15 minute chart, possibly go down to a five minute chart and start day trading this and becoming intimate with whatever coin that I choose to get, not Bitcoin, everything, I, all the profits that I get are going to be dumped into my investment, which is Bitcoin. And I'm just going to keep growing my Bitcoin, grow Bitcoin, grow Bitcoin, and then get that going, you know, on that level. So as you can see, the wedge, it's gone down and it's not going up. The 200 MA is coming down. This is a 15 minute chart. 200 MA is coming down and it's starting to come back and meet with the candles and the, two, and the 20 MA. So we shall see what happens on here, you know, when it comes to that. So we don't know. Um, what's going to happen when these two, these two start converging. But right now, it's coming to a ceiling. You know, I mean, we can sit here and watch this for a little while, but it's a 15-minute chart. But right here, you know, as you can see, it's a resistant point. And if it breaks it and turns green over it, right, and this starts going up on an uptrend, um, that may be a good sign. You know what I mean? That this is going to start flattening out. This is going to be on an uptrend, and it could be a, a small buy point. Um, and make a small, you know, uh, win off this on a sideways market. So, you know, you're supposed to buy underneath the red, but, you know, there's so much volatility in here that you can always go back to the meat and potatoes and just use the 20 MA. Breaks the 20 MA, turns green on the next one, pretty strong green bar. It's, it's going to possibly, more than not, go on a small uptrend and so you can make some gains from a buy point here and then you know sell it off down here when it starts correcting back to the 20 ma if it does that so i, I can't tell the future you know that's almost looking like it's on a buy point but that could change yeah it's, it's it's crossed over so that's a buy point the strength of it's right in the middle so your indicators are accentuators for what you think may happen what what's going to happen what's going to happen okay well that tells me there's more probability that it's going to go up. That tells me there's possible that it has room to grow. So it's the way that we look at these technical analysis things. And, you know, and that's where I really wanted to touch on this. You know, um, I keep seeing the same people talking about the same things and how it's nothing's analogous with the, with the uh, stock market. Nothing's analogous with the way we trade crypto 
and the way uh, stocks are traded on their tech, you know, uh, exchanges and so on and so forth. That's absolutely incorrect. Okay, and I thought the same thing when I first started, and it's absolutely incorrect, and I learned the hard way. So, you know, you got to talk, you got to deal with the devil before you, you know, go to heaven, you know, or go to the moon. So, um, you know, I dealt with the devil when it comes to the stock markets years ago, and I learned how to play that, and then I thought this was different on the way things work. They're not really that different. There's some things that are different, it's, you know, as opposed to the volatility and so on and so forth. But the way these are exchanges and moved and so on and so forth, there is no difference for the most part, the way the 20 and 200 work. It just moves dramatically. And that's why I use the simple moving average as opposed to the, ex, you know, the exponential moving average because the exponential only goes off the closing price. It's only showing you what the pros and pro, closing price is and then taking the average off the closing price because we're just so in uh, indained with the closing price of it being the ands all, bees all. When you get a closing price, that's that's past information. You want simple moving average. You know what I mean? You want you know what's the average of that red bar in the middle there, and how big it is, and how small it is, and so and so. You're getting a better um, and a and a more gradual move of the twenty and the two hundred MA instead of these big spikes up and down with the two hundred and the twenty MA EMA. So there's big differences on here. So like I was saying, crypto, you know, crypto fear and greed index, 13, 19 yesterday, 34 last week, 24 last month. So went up and now it's gone down. I mean, it looks pretty much just like Bitcoin. It's always on a constant gradual down and now it's coming to a wedge. You know, so, we, so should we play the wedge on here? No, you know what I mean? It's, that's, it doesn't make any sense playing wedges that way. You can use them as guidelines, but not overall guidelines, as accentuators for possibilities of new highs coming up and breaking and, and big booms happening up or down, so on and so forth. But it's not your initial indicator to do things. I've learned this the hard way. I really want to pass this on to everybody so everybody understands this, that you know, a lot of people that I am watching they're not learning through the year. They just keep doing the same thing over and showing you the same thing over and over. And then they're showing you journalism that they're saying, this is what this person says. And I don't know if it's right or not, but that's what this, so why are you showing me? If you don't believe of, about that news, don't show me the news. I don't want it to hear, I can hear all the FUD I want. I can watch it and look at it on my, my, I need to see things that you believe in and what you think is correct on this market so I can gauge it a little bit more. But if you're just giving me something that I can look up myself and some journalism can, you know, journalist can lie to you, you know, because he needs to make his money today to, to make a journal, you know, make an article, it doesn't make any sense. So you really have to, you know, weed through the roughs and read through the dark, um, you know, have, you know, deal with the devil, not, not make a deal with the devil, but you have to deal with the devil and hopefully that you can come out um, and, and rise above it. So, um, that's it for this one. So my name is Crypto Dog to the rescue. Please smash the like button, hit the bell, comment below. No value to you guys, but it has great value to me and the dogs I'll be rescuing. You guys keep up the grind.